Good morning. All right, we are in John chapter 13 today, moving on to chapter 13. We will be reading verses 1 through 5. Let's go ahead and pray, then we will read the scripture for the day. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you as always for your word, and we pray for wisdom and insight as we read it. We pray that you would give us humble, teachable hearts. Um, God, uh, help us to understand what it means to be humble. Help us to be taught by your son Christ as he demonstrates um, in, this, uh, in this chapter what it looks like to be a servant. God, we pray um, that you would continue this work that you've begun in us of making us more like him. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read John 13, 1 through 5. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. God's word to us today in the book of John. All right, let's observe. So we know that this um, was before the Feast of the Passover. So they're, they're gathered for the Feast of the Passover, but it's right before the feast. Um, Jesus knows that his hour has come. We see that he loved his own who were in the world until the end. Uh, it tells us that the devil put it into Judas's heart to betray Jesus. We see that Jesus knew that he had come from God and was going back to God, and, all the th and that all things had been given into his hands by the Father. Then Jesus began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he was wearing, which he was wearing because he had taken off his outer garments. In this passage, as we go into uh, interpretation and application, um, we see that um, it, it speaks a lot about what Jesus knew. Right? So there are several times it says Jesus knew, um, Jesus knowing, right? Um, and, and it talks a lot about the things that he knew or um, was currently knowing. And here are the things that it, that it says, um, according to this passage. Um, he, he knew that the Father had given all things into his hands. Right? Meaning that he was the authority now. He's in charge of, of what? Of all things. All things are in the hands of Christ because the Father has given them to him. He also um, knew that he had come from God. So he knew that he had, he had existed in this exalted state with and as God. He knew that he was returning to God. So he knew that he would once again be exalted along the, uh, beside the Father. Um, he knew um, that um, sorry, he knew that he had his hour had come, right He knew that he, his hour had come to depart the world. So he knew that his hour would soon be at hand of uh, his glorification again, of going back to the Father. So it's with this knowledge of who he is, and his imminent glorification, right, it's at hand that he 
continues to love his own who are in the world. He's not focused on his glorification at this point. He's he's focusing on loving his disciples. It says that having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He does not lay aside this act this attitude of love, this, this demonstration of the love that he has for his own, even though he's so close to the end. He takes it all the way to the end. Um, and it's also important to keep in mind that among the twelve is Judas. Among those who are his own, who he loves, is Judas. And Judas is under the influence of the devil. And Jesus is loving his own to the end. And Judas is is receiving benefit of that love as well. And he looks at Judas and he, he clearly still demonstrates love to Judas. In the washing of the feet, Judas doesn't say in this passage that Judas was excluded. So Jesus is humbling himself even to the point where he's washing the feet of the man who's going to betray him. And we see that, and what an amazing act of humility, of of service. What a great demonstration of what it looks like what it should look like for us as we serve each other. But here's the thing. That's just his, uh, this is really just his example to them. The real act of uh, humility, the real act of service started when he decided to leave his throne and come to the earth to humble himself to the form of a man. I mean, his, his disciples would have been looking at him as, as we might also and say, what are you doing, Jesus? Th- this, is, this is beneath you to get on your, to, to take your, your outer garments off and to get on your hands and knees and wash our feet. This is beneath you. But in Christ's perspective, he knew. He knew that he was God. He knew that he was returning to heaven. So to him, it's, it's almost as though you could say, well, I already humbled myself this far. What's another 36 inches? Right? I came from heaven. I descended to earth from heaven. What is it to now get on my knees? We need to look at Christ's service, his, his obedience to God, and his humility in the perspective of eternity. And while the humbling and washing the feet of his disciples is a a wonderful example to us, and he did it intentionally to give us this example of how we should behave towards each other, it's really just, just a picture for us of what he really did. We can't begin to fathom the lengths he went to as he humbled himself to become man, the God-man. The act of washing his disciples' feet, like I said, is it's not insignificant, but in comparison to the distance he traversed between heaven and earth. The taking off of his outer garment in humility as he took the form of a servant before them with a towel around his waist washing their feet right? in the form of a servant. This is nothing compared to it's not nothing but compared to the removing of his glory 
as a creator of heaven and earth. The bearing of himself to become an infant, a human baby, in com complete humility as a man. And this is the picture we see here. That he, he humbles himself. I mean, to us who esteem men highly, this, uh, this posture change from standing to kneeling seems very significant. And in our perspectives, I suppose it is. But to Jesus, he had already humbled himself. And he was demonstrating to us how he had humbled himself and how we should behave the same way. Um, laying aside his outer garment, nothing compared to laying aside his glory. Kneeling at the feet of his disciples to wash him is nothing compared to kneeling on the earth and even further as he would go to kneeling um, and submitting himself to the um, to death on a cross, he demonstrated here. He gave us a picture, like I said, of what we should do, and just a taste of what he had already done. Just a taste. So. Um, my takeaway for today is that Jesus' display of humble service as he washed his disciples' feet was an illustration for them of the great love with which he was already loving them. As, as it talks about, he, he, he loved his own who were in the world and he loved them to the end. He was already loving them with this love, but he was demonstrating it to them. His posture of humble servitude was initiated not when he knelt to wash their feet, but when he came from God, when he descended from heaven, and culminated when his, with his death on the cross. It didn't begin and end with the washing of the feet. It began when he descended from heaven and culminated in his death on the cross. And he did all of this knowing who he was, where he came from, and where he was about to return to. Perfect obedience to the will of the Father. May we live in that same posture of obedience, humility, and service to our God and to those he has placed around us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are proud and we are um, not easily brought to a place where we are able to show love to those around us or to a place where we can admit our need for you even. So God, we pray that you would teach us humility, that we would see the example of Christ and that we would learn from it. We pray that you would graciously spare us the hard lessons that come from a prideful heart. We pray that we would not put ourselves in a position where you would oppose us. But God, we fearfully submit to the truth that even that opposition, if it leads to our eventual humbling and us becoming one of those that you love, would be preferable to you opposing us for eternity because our prideful hearts are never relinquished. So God, we pray again with fear and trepidation to be taught the lessons of humility. And it is frightening, but glorious to think of living 
in obedience to you. Receiving the love that Christ gives to those who are his own. God, we desire that. And we, we can ask for nothing more. Please help us today to submit to your word that we have read today and, and continue to teach us through it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I will see you again.